Perfect Blue was the directional debut of the late Satoshi Kon, and despite being released over two decades ago, manages to remain relevant to today, if not more relevant than ever. What is relevant from Perfect Blue are the many issues it accurately demonstrates. In this presentation, I will be concentrating on Perfect Blue's accurate demonstration of the damaging possibilities of the internet and how it is so relevant to today's technological climate. The use of internet demonstrated in Perfect Blue is most similar to the social media that we have today. On the slide are a list of the problems social media can have, which I think most people can agree on. The problems listed are all symptoms that the audience see the protagonist, Mima, suffer through. Despite being released during the time when the internet was a new concept with limited uses, Perfect Blue was able to accurately demonstrate the dangerous possibilities of it through Mima's room. Mima shockingly discovers what claims to be her own diary on a website dubbed Mima's Room. The entries of the diary are disturbingly accurate, filled with sensitive information on her daily life to the tiniest detail of what groceries she prefers to buy at the supermarket. Viewers may notice that the way Mima's Room is presented is very similar to a profile on social media, such as Facebook. In fact, it can be said that Mima's Room is an early form of a social media profile. Exactly like a Facebook profile, Mima's room is filled with photos and information of Mima, only that the profile is not created by Mima herself, but by another person. One of the core themes of Perfect Blue is identity, and characters are shown to be affixed with more than one identity at the same time. Viewers will notice that there are two Mimas, the present Mima as an actress and the past Mima as an idol. The alternate identity of Mima is solidified by the creation of Mima's room, as it acts as a space to house the idol Mima and is the place from which she crosses out into the physical world in front of Mima. The existence of these two identities is comparable to the way people today can have more than one identity. People can easily create another identity on the internet by simply creating an account. Many people have more than one account on the same social media platform. They could be private and public accounts, or they could even be professional accounts such as for art or modelling. Each of these accounts all serve a different purpose and are manipulated to show a different identity or characteristic. The existence of all these different identities on the internet connected to one person could lead to a loss or confusion of identity in some cases. And this is what happens to Mima, but also worse. Mima struggles to recognize which is the true identity, suffocated by the past image of herself as an idol. The Mima from Mima's room is a fake identity, and this is hugely relevant to how easy it is to make fake identities on the internet these days. With the use of social media increasing, the term catfish is a word that we have all become aware of. Impressively, Perfect Blue was able to demonstrate a catfish well before the word came to relevance. And this catfish is unsurprisingly Mimania, as he is the creator of Mima's room, which pretends to be an official account of Mima. The identity of Mima's room is fake, because of its manipulation, reflecting the fantasies and ideals of Mimania. Mima's room shows a confident and angelic identity, which is a polar opposite of the anxious and humanized Mima we see in the physical world. Contrasting identities can be seen everywhere on the internet today, with people having a high presence on the internet, despite not having much in the physical world. For example, along with people having friends, in quotation marks, from online, Likes and followers can also be bought on social media to deceive popularity. In spite of the realism that social media can have, Perfect Blue breaks down this illusion. In the end, the idol Mima is simply a mental image in Mima's mind, just as how happenings on social media are not necessarily brought out in real life. Misinformation and fake news are words that have become increasingly used in recent years, and this is another issue Perfect Blue manages to raise. In one scene, Mima's room blames the rape scene on the producers and asks for help. Although these may line up with Mima's deepest thoughts, Mima quickly denies this as she did agree to take part in the scene. Mima's room can misinform from the fact that Mimania manipulates information to his ideals whilst pretending to be from a reputable source, the reputable source being the original Mima. Mima's room accurately predicts the nature of social media, that anyone can post anything whilst pretending to be a reputable source and all of this can lead to misinformation and fake news. Privacy is another issue demonstrated by all the sensitive information leaked on Mima's room. 
The entries of Mima's room are filled with pictures and information Mima would not want shared, especially by other people. It is from Mima's room that Mima becomes first fully aware of her surveillance by an anonymous individual. In this instance, Perfect Blue demonstrated the anonymity the internet can provide to stalkers such as Mimania, and this is backed up by the numerous sayings of Who are you? by Mima. Clearly, this anonymous surveillance is a big contributor to Mima's stresses. One of the questions that Perfect Blue asks is, how much of your public persona do you own? The identity of the Mima from Mima's room is shaped by the fantasy and ideals of Mimania. It follows the public persona of a pure and angelic idol. This question of public persona is extremely relevant to today. Easier than ever before, people can express and share their opinions by using the internet, and it is these people that make or break the success of celebrities. Perfect Blue has demonstrated this effect through Mima's room. Mima does not own her public persona as she has no control on what gets posted on Mima's room and is obviously strongly affected by it. Mima expresses her fear with the line, what if this other Mima starts acting on its own? With the rise of the internet, the threat of hacking has also increased, with a big target of hacking today being celebrities. Due to Mima's fear of being taken over by Mima's room, Mima's room can be seen as a form of hacking. Addiction and isolation are the last two symptoms from the list that we see Mima suffer through. A significant amount of people use social media today, with 16 to 24 year olds spending three hours a day on it. The internet has become an essential part of people's lives, with the use time of it increasing with younger people. Many people are addicted to social media today. Comparably, Perfect Blue shows Mima checking on Mima's room often, looking for updates. Mima's room is so strongly rooted in Mima's mind, that Rumi advises her to stop looking at Mima's room. This advice by Rumi, ironically, is what we hear widely today, to reduce our time on the social media. As the film progresses, we increasingly see the isolation of Mima. The social media in Perfect Blue, namely Mima's room, is a huge reason for this isolation. A reason for isolation today is that going through social media is mostly an independent activity. And another reason is that it also creates the illusion of companionship. In Mima's case, ironically the companion is the idol Mima from Mima's room. The issues of social media that Perfect Blue demonstrates was not as relevant during its initial release in 1997. Only public figures with large followings could relate and truly comprehend the issues demonstrated. And this is who the film is about. However, this is all changed now with the arrival of social media. Everyone is able to become a micro-celebrity with an online following by a few simple clicks meaning that the issues demonstrated in Perfect Blue are more relevant than ever. Here are a list of the academic sources I've used for this presentation. Thank you very much for listening.